Occasionally I try to review the projects submitted by you guys. Today's project is a delightful one. It's a one kilobyte JavaScript game engine. It is called the Kilobyte Gambit. We will first check out the game, then we will check out its source code, then I'm going to compare it to old 8-bit chess game engines from Commodore days. Let's check it out. Let's start by playing a game of chess with our 1 kilobyte chess engine. If you want to try it yourself, I have the link to the project in the video description. From the game intro, you play as white. Click on a piece, then click where to move. Supports casting and person and pawn promotion to queen only. It won't announce victory or defeat only prevent any further moves. The entire brain of the chess engine fits into 1024 kilobytes, which is only three times the length of this hub text, including setting up the board and validating the moves. All right, now I'll fast forward to my gameplay. I'm an okay chess player, but I play a bit slow in pursuit not to make any significant mistakes. This time I will try to play it quick. And if I make any mistakes, I'll hope that the one kilobyte chess brain will also do some so that I won't lose miserably. Unfortunately, I made a significant mistake in the last part of the game. I thought my bishop was a pawn, as they look very similar with these graphics. Thankfully, the game engine went crazy with the king movement and threw the game. But up to that moment, it played competently. I'm pretty impressed. Apparently, it has a CCRL rating of 1200. It even manages to make an n person move. If you don't know what it is, it's a fancy pawn move that looks like this. The entire source code of the game is what you see on the screen. Simply amazing. From the documentation. The code above is setting up the board and the pieces, checking that your moves are legal and deciding how to respond. It doesn't flag up checkmate or stalemate though. You will have to work that out for yourself. Looking four steps ahead, a point system considers the factors such as the value of the piece, strength of the area of the board and speed of the capture and victory. It calls an external function to update the display and the display code calls the functions to trigger the moves. I'm assuming that it only looks for two moves ahead per player for a total of four, which is pretty good since that is roughly what I'm doing in my mind while playing. Before jumping into the deobfuscated source code, I want to describe how a one kilobyte chess engine is possible to begin with. The magic word is game trees. Quoting from Wikipedia, in game theory, a game tree is a directed graph whose nodes are positions in a game and whose edges are the moves. The complete game tree for a game is the game tree starting at the initial position and containing all possible moves from each position. The complete tree is the same tree as that is obtained from an extensive form game representation. Let me show you the game tree for a much simpler game, Tic Tac Toe. In this game tree example, we start the game from the very beginning with an empty board. Then we calculate all possible first moves. Then we calculate all possible responses by our opponent to our moves. Then we will move on to the second move and onward. Doing this for a full game of chess would take immense amount of computational power. As you saw in my gameplay, the JavaScript game engine was blazingly fast. So let me describe why this tiny chess engine is so performant. Our chess engine starts by calculating each move's value in each branch of the game tree. For instance, taking an opponent's pawn is a good move. Taking a bishop is even better and taking command of a corner of the board is the best. On the other hand, losing a piece without getting something in return is bad. As we are trying to make moves that minimize losses and maximize our wins, we are doing a form of minimaxing. However, our game tree branches out exponentially with each move, so we cannot possibly explore all possible moves. Instead, we stop following branches with the lowest score. Ideally, we should only stop calculating all possible outcomes of a move if one of the outcomes of that move is a definitive loss. This is called alpha-beta pruning of a game tree. However, to keep things simple, 
a one kilobyte implementation sticks to a more straightforward method of ranking the game three nodes and choosing the one with a score better than a certain threshold. Now let's dive into the source code and see how all this is implemented in only one kilobyte. The deobfuscated source code is quite understandable. The state of the chessboard is kept in memory using traditional matrix naming conventions. Letters for x-axis and numerals for y-axis. Also, the symbols for the chess pieces are very simple. Numerals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 are used as symbols for pawn, king, knight, bishop, rook and queen. The first paragraph of the code declares all possible variables that define the game state. And the most important of them is the board state. When you have this much state in your app in an actual project, you would want to use immutable state containers. If you don't know about state containers or immutability, don't worry. I will make a dedicated video on these fundamental concepts. And if you don't want to miss them out, don't forget to sub. The next piece of the code defines the valid moves for each chess piece, which are again denoted by integers for brevity. Finally, the compute function is where all the magic happens. This function uses the game tree that I previously mentioned. The game only calculates two moves ahead per player. I didn't try changing this. However, making this higher can make the game more difficult, while making it much slower. Next, the code proceeds to scan the board for all valid moves for all the pieces. If the opponent has a piece in target cell, that is also taken into account. Finally, the code checks if there is a king at the target cell. In that case, it's a checkmate. Creating a game tree of possible moves is not enough. The game needs to calculate the value of each move. This is called heuristic. In this game engine, heuristic is very simple. The value of a move goes up if you are going to take a stronger position on the board or if you are going to take an opponent piece. The more valuable the piece, the better the move. If the consecutive possible moves by the opponent result in a loss of our piece, the value of that move goes down, and the engine continues to scan for moves up to the given scan depth. As I mentioned earlier, this game only scans for two moves ahead per player. However, even then, it managed to play a good game against me. And that is all the source code. Even the fully commented source code is very brief. No wonder why the compressed version fits into a single kilobyte of space. Tiny chess engines are nothing new. First 8-bit chess engines emerged in the 1980s. 1K ZX Chess was made in 1982 for Sinclair ZX81 computer and only takes 672 bytes in memory. At the time, it was the smallest chess implementation of any platform. However, today, the record is held by Lean Chess, which occupies a whopping 288 bytes of memory space. Unfortunately, I came in too late to get a taste of Sinclair or Commodore systems. If you have some gear from the golden days of computers, send me a photo of it. I will review it or at least mention it in a future video. Well, that is it for this project review. If you have a project you would like me to review, leave me a comment. Or if you know a great open source project that is worth reviewing, ping me. And I'll see you guys on the next one.